recording has started. Hey, what's happening? Glad to be here. It's got to be the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they're America's team. Um, I think they've, uh, and I know I'm going to rattle some cages there in Houston right off the bat there, so I apologize. But, uh, I mean, you know, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Des Bryant. I mean, we've got the great defense coming back this year, Jalen Smith. And, um, you know, I grew up loving uh, Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith. Uh, I can just name all these Cowboys for you, Cheval. Michael Irvin, Deion Sanders, all these wonderful Dallas Cowboys. And I'm very excited for the NFL season to get underway again soon. So um, I love my Cowboys. I also love my Chicago Cubs. Um, but, you know, right off the bat, you got to say the Cowboys. <laughs> I tripped him up already. There you go. I said I tripped you up already. You weren't expecting that. Yeah. Yeah, so I've got a copy of the book right here. It's called 50 States, 100 Days of the Book. And um, I wrote the book right after my trip around the country in the summer of 2015. So I'd volunteered with a different youth-related nonprofit organization in all 50 states over the course of 100 days. I did this solo uh, without a corporate sponsor of any kind. I traveled in alone in a 2007 Honda Accord that I call the Honda Hotel. And... Um, uh, I wrote the book in November of 2015, right after the trip ended, uh, as an ebook. It was published in print this year in the uh, in March of 2017, and uh, it actually will bring you through step by step and state by state, um, one through 50. And we see here, state number 19 is Oregon with new avenues for youth, and uh, each chapter tells you the story of a different uh, youth-related nonprofit organization that I volunteered with during that summer. And I think uh, the way that we connected Cheval is that uh, during the course of this trip, uh, I was the first person to use live streaming and also Snapchat in all 50 states. So I used social media as best I could to be able to share the stories of all these nonprofits. And it's very special for me to be able to talk about that today on National Nonprofit Day. How cool is that? It's like we planned it that way. Yeah, no, it certainly was a tall task. Um, you know, the trip was not designed as a live streaming trip. Uh, the trip was designed as a volunteer trip and a storytelling trip, right? So uh, when I started planning, this was actually New Year's Eve, December uh, 2013 into, uh, or I guess December 2012 into December, uh, January 2013. Um, so this was way before live streaming started. Uh, I took a trip, actually, the first one was in 2014, but that was without any sort of um, nonprofit element. And then after that first trip, I decided to go again. And that process, that thought process, that planning that took place, you know, from uh, December, January, February, March of 2015, that was when live streaming Really, it didn't begin because live streaming has been around in some form or fashion for decades, but live streaming from a mobile perspective with Meerkat and Periscope, um, that was right when the live streaming wave started to hit. And so when I was building my business cards and building a content strategy for when I was going to visit all these different organizations, um, I just decided to put the Meerkat logo on there. And I said, you know what, this will be fun. And I live streamed in, the, in South Carolina and then Georgia and then Florida. And it wasn't until maybe the fifth or sixth state. And I said, wait a second, no one's ever done this before. You know, maybe I could be the first one to live stream in all 50 states. And from there, it became an integral part of what I was doing. But it really wasn't part of the plan before I started, as crazy as that sounds. I really wanted to go and share stories of the nonprofits, of the different volunteer opportunities, and then live streaming just sort of became the, the best way to do that.
Yeah. Yeah, no, of course, uh, I think when you head out on a trip like this, and, and of course, most people won't, you know, most people won't go on enormous 100 state journeys like or 100 day 50 state journeys like that. Um, but one of the keys, Cheval, is consistency, right? And I think that's a lesson that anyone listening to this podcast, no matter what you do in your business, whether it's for profit or nonprofit, or you're just a, an entrepreneur, uh, you want to have consistency. And so I'm really grateful to be part of uh, what's the word family now, you know, with well over 300 episodes. So congratulations on that. Um, but I think that's a, definitely just a testament to when you have an idea, you believe in it, and you keep on creating over and over and over again, it's really amazing how far you can go, right? And so I wanted to create um, a systemic sort of uh, process to be able to create create content at each organization that I visited. And this is something that I repeated last year with Humana as well. Uh, it's something that we did at in San Diego with the Big Brothers Big Sisters of America National Conference a couple months ago, where you want to create something, you want that something to be the control. Right, So we want to create basically the same thing each place we go, each organization we visit, each interview that we do on what's the word, right? And the variable is that content that's within there, right? So when your audience is looking at uh, what you're creating on an ongoing basis, they know they can Google Cheval, they can look on your, your Facebook page, they can look on your YouTube channel, they can find what's the word, and they know what to expect when they open up that episode, right? So the variable is all the different guests that you have. The variable was all the different organizations that I worked with. But when you when you control the process, when you have an idea of what it is that you wanna create uh, from a, uh, a file size standpoint and what it's gonna look like, et cetera, um, you're really able to make something really special on an ongoing basis. Of course, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a great question. Yeah, um, so there were two junctures in the book um, during the trip that I uh, really thought that I was toast. Um, me being toast, not the trip itself, because there were multiple other junctures where I didn't have confirmation with the organization and I kind of thought like, oh man, this meeting isn't gonna happen and I totally blew it, right? So I'm not even talking about that you know, Memphis and, and uh, Rhode Island uh, and Connecticut, uh, not even going there. But in New Mexico and in Maryland, I broke down mentally, emotionally, physically. Like I was in tears. I was really struggling, um, especially in New Mexico. That was definitely the worst because, uh, you know, you're out there in state number 12, 13, and you got a long way to go, man. You know how far it is to drive west across Texas. I mean, if I told you to go drive to New Mexico right now, Cheval, you'd be like, no way. That is a long, hot, uh, draining ride, you know, to, to go across that, that state of Texas there. And I think it took a lot out of me, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, I think what got me through it, quite honestly, were, were a couple of things. You know, one was the live streaming community that I knew that I could press a button when I was struggling. I went out to a parking lot, you know, at, the, at a hotel that I was not staying at because I was running out of money already. And I pressed the button to go live on Meerkat. And I was just spilling my emotions out um, to people that I had never heard of around the world. And to be able to do that and be able to get that feedback and get that guidance and get that emotional support was a huge help. You know, but I think the other thing that got me through it, Cheval, was the belief in the bigger picture, the belief in what you're doing, the belief in the fact that no one wants to hear the story of the guy that visited 13 states in 24 days. You know what I mean? No one, that, that's not a story that you go tell your grandkids and your great grandkids. You know, you don't go buy that book at the local library or at the local bookstore or rent, rent it out from the library. You know, so for me, I had to just keep thinking back to what I really believed in from the beginning, which was, this is the coolest thing I can possibly think of. I know I can make a huge impact in the world. And you know what? If I stop now, I'm letting people down. I'm letting down these organizations. I'm letting down these kids. I'm letting down these communities that I know that I can help and I can benefit when I make it there. And so from then on forward, it was all systems go.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's two two big things you just said there, Cheval, that I, I can touch on. You know, one, the idea of believing in the process, right, and enjoying the process, right? Like being out there on the road is something that I still love to do. I love road tripping. I love traveling. And those 100 days, uh, technically 99 days, but who's counting, right? Those, those 100 days... Um, were some of the most special times of my life, getting a chance to meet people like Abby in, in Wyoming, you know, and getting a chance to interview Nicole in, in South Dakota, getting a chance to go up and meet the team at Covenant House Alaska in Anchorage, you know, my first time stepping foot, you know, in Alaska and Hawaii, you know, so it was very, very special there. But I think I don't want to draw the conclusion as to what you just said. Not everyone has that big goal in mind. Not everyone is... is driven and not everyone is dedicated to achieving something bigger, right? A lot of people just live their life day after day and they're not thinking about, you know, what big direction they want to go in, right? And so when you talk about you need to remember that you're working towards something bigger, you really do. You have to start there. You have to think, where do I want to be in two years, in five years, in 10 years? What? And for me, Cheval, it's always been even bigger than that. It's been, what do I want to be remembered for? You know what I mean? When I die, and we're all going to die someday, but when I'm, when I'm not on this earth anymore, how do I want people to remember me? How do, how do I want people to say, oh yeah, Chris Strub, that guy, you know, look at what he accomplished, look at what he did. And in my 20s, I felt I wasn't on a path where when I died someday, my legacy would be remembered the way I wanted to. You know, so I look at it as building a legacy, right? I want to be someone who every day when he woke up and put his blue jeans on, right? There's a plug for blue jeans. When I put my blue jeans on one leg at a time, I want everyone for as many generations as will sustain now. And and it's, I guess it's kind of in doubt how many more there will be at this point. But I want everyone to say, damn, that guy, Chris Strub, he did everything that he could to make a positive difference in the world and, uh, you know, good for him. Cheval, would we have ever met if, it, if not for social media? I doubt it, you know? And I think when we look at the connections that we've made with, with people, um, and I am not rich, I, I, I don't have a deep bank account, uh, I'm not, you know, flying to the Galapagos every weekend, um, but I am extraordinarily rich in friendships, and I am extraordinarily rich in relationships, and I am so blessed to get to know. And Cheval and I met uh, on June 30th at Social Media Day Houston, where he did an awesome job uh, presenting about live streaming and talking up blue jeans and all these different platforms. And, um, you know, I had a chance to meet so many wonderful people that day, dude. You know, uh, Cammy and Madeline and Wendy and Rebecca, you know, and, and Blake was there and Chris McManamy. And of course, Chris Gillentine was presenting, right? Like all of these people, I consider everyone friends now. You know, like you're in Houston, I'm on Long Island, I'm a Cowboys fan, you're a 49ers fan, but we're, you and I are friends. You know what I mean? When you email me and say, hey, do you want to be on What's the Word? I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. Because we made that connection. You know what I mean? And I am so blessed because of social media and not, not just because of social media, but because of the way that we use social media you know, to press that button and not be shy about live streaming or not be shy about telling our stories on Snapchat or not be shy about, uh, even from a bigger business perspective, starting something and being dedicated to it, right? We both just got off this this thing, Twitter, uh, Twitter Smarter with Madeline Sklar, and she's been doing it for two plus years now. She just started a new podcast. Like, that's what I appreciate the most, right? I appreciate people like Cheval, you know, like Madeline Sklar, like Christy Gillentine, who are creating things that are bigger than themselves, right? Create something that's bigger than yourself. You know, that when someone is having a conversation over dinner or they're out at a bar somewhere, 
This can be a conversation piece, right? Or you can jump on Twitter smarter and you can make friends even if you haven't met Madeline Sklar or even if you haven't gone and volunteered with Christy Gillentine and Baton Rouge, right? Like what we're creating here you know what I mean? Someone's going to Google a previous guest of Cheval's and they're going to go back and listen to episode 172 of What's the Word and they're going to learn about that person and by association learn about Cheval because of the work that you've done. Right. And so we, we think so much about these one to one relationships. But when you when you really think about what you're creating and the way that we're putting all this positive energy out into the world, social media has been a great way for us to make these positive ripple effects in the world in ways that I think you and I, and Madeline and Christy and everyone else who's, you know, working as hard as they can, the Mitch Jacksons, the John Tripps, the Melissa Reyes's, right? Like all of these live streamers are doing things that I don't know know that any of us really appreciate the true power of because we're creating these resonating waves around the world that we may not ever even know the result of. Yeah. Well, real quick, I, I wouldn't say just to, to touch on something that you said, I wouldn't call it the top 75. I would call it 75 because I could sit down this afternoon and write a list of another 75 and probably tomorrow go do another 75, right? So there's, there's no exclusivity. There's no like these are the top 1, 10, 25, right? Like when you meet people, I don't judge people based on – their follower count. I don't judge people based on anything like that, right? It's about making those connections, drawing those relationships, and being able to leverage those relationships into uh, successful business things, right? Like Cammy was talking about communities that convert, right? So, um, you know, when you when you're talking about what makes an influencer, I think again, it's someone that uh, leads by their actions, right, and can inspire action among the people that are listening, right, So, or watching, or tuning in, or tweeting, right? So action can be d defined in so many different broad ways, right? What, what action do you want somebody to take? Do you want somebody to go buy the shirt that you're wearing? Do you want someone to come to the chocolate shop that you run called Perfection Chocolates and Sweets in Sydney, Australia? Do you want someone to come listen to you at a conference? Do you want someone to buy your book or buy your online course, right? So inf influence, influencer marketing, it's such, a, um, such an amorphous, uh, like crazy, ungraspable uh, idea, right? That we're, we're all, excuse me, we're all at our core, Cheval. We are all famous to a few people, as Joe Wilson would say, right? We are all influencers to a few people. And so the idea that we, we, we decide that some people are influencers and some people are not, I think is garbage. I hate that. I hate that, right? So, you know, oh, like, oh, Chris Strub, you're an influencer. Okay, fine. If you want to call me an influencer, fine. But I'm not going to parade myself around saying, oh, look, I'm an influencer. I'm going to influence, like, oh, let me wave the magic wand. No, 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 right? I think we want to be defined by what we do and what we're about and what we create and what we put into the world, right? Like Steve Jobs was not, or who's the guy from Apple? Tim Cook, right? He's not on a, a Facebook Live or on Blue Jeans all the time. But if he was, I guarantee you a freaking 10 million people would tune in and watch because he has influence in his field, right? Like people trust him for what he does, right? So I think we want to start looking at people for the content of their character and their abilities and what they're able to do. 
and stop looking at, well, this person has 20,000 followers and this person has 2 million followers and this person has two followers, right? Because, you know, from my perspective, my biggest influencer would be my mom, right? My mom's got one Twitter follower and it's me, right? But if my mom knocked on the door right now and said, Chris, I need you to come drive me to Comac or let's, you know, I need to go to New Jersey right now. I'd be like, Cheval, I'm sorry, I got to go. And you'd be like, Chris, I get it. Peace out. You know, so that's influence, right? Influence is defined in so many different ways that when we just stick numbers to it, we're just being lazy and we're just being uh, simplistic. And, you know, if, if, you know, Cheval has influenced me, you know, then that makes Cheval an influencer by definition, right? Cheval emails me and says, hey, do you want to be on What's the Word? I said, hell yeah. That's influence, right? Because I didn't need to spend this afternoon having this conversation, right? And the other 300 guests don't need to, to do anything like that, right? But when you exert your influence and you have that, that power that, that you've developed through building that relationship, yes, you are an influencer. If you're watching this at home, you're an influencer. You may not think of yourself that way, but when you, when you look at the way that you are uh, affecting what other people are doing in your life, uh, yes, you are an influencer to someone. Yeah, no, I, you're exactly right that uh, there is, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. I, I think that's a perfect way to put it. Um, you know, I've been blessed that some people have referred to me as an influencer, and that's great. You know, like that's totally cool. But again, I, I think we want to be, we always want to remain grounded and we want to be humble, right? Like we want to remember, um, look, we're just people. You know what I mean? Like, um, even at social media day, it, it gets a little, I don't want to say like uncomfortable, but when you're, you're sitting in the crowd and people are like, oh, there's Chris Strub. It's like, hey, I'm just here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, we're, we're just people, you know, and there are some really wonderful, really super influential people in the social media space who, who are so grounded. And I look up to those people the most, right? I think Joel Com is the best example, right? This dude's got... 500,000 Twitter followers. He's written like 16 books. You know, he's got all these live video courses and stuff. You see Joel Com in real life. Have you met Joel Com? He's just like the coolest guy, right? And he's just exactly like that in real life, on a live stream, on Snapchat, on Instagram, right? Like he's a businessman and he's a smart man. You know, but he's incredibly personable, incredibly accessible, incredibly sort of um, personable. And I think that's what we all sort of sometimes need to, to put our caps back on and say, you know what, like, we're all just people here. You know, like, a relationship is a relationship, a, a hello is a hello, right? And so um, I just encourage everyone to always try and treat everyone with that respect, you know, and I'm not even getting into the, the societal philosophical points that are, are coming into focus this week in our country, right? Just from a social media perspective, you know, treat everyone with respect and kindness. Like if you tweet to me, I'm not going to look and be like, oh, you have seven followers. I'm not tweeting you back. You know what I mean? What I'm doing is reading the content of that tweet and saying, oh, is this an important, is this a question that is of meaning, of value? 99.9% .9 of the time it is. So let me reply back and, and say hello right? Maybe I'll send you a video back. You know, like, just be good to people, man. Like, just be good to people. That's all it is. That's all. Anyone that's watching this and they're like, oh, Chris Strub, he's verified on Twitter. He's, he worked with Humana. He's got a book, blah, blah, blah. Just be good to people and be good to be, be good to people over and over and over and over again. And it will get you places. That's all it is. And Madeline Scar will tell you the exact same thing. Be good to people, period.
Yeah. Yeah, I take a very egalitarian approach to live video, right? I, I think that, you know, when Facebook rolled this out and they did it strategically themselves with the, the um, billboards and the television ads and the ads on the sides of a bus, right? Like these ads are not showing The Rock and they're not showing Madonna live streaming, right? Like they're showing people sitting in a dentist chair and sharing their experiences with their kids or sharing their experience, you know, playing sports out at a park or, you know, th these human experiences. Again, when we talk about we are all famous to a few people, that's where, that's where I always like to start the conversation. That's where I start and say, when you, when you put your, 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 we are all famous to a few people cap on or the shirt on, and you realize as the director of the Houston YMCA or the Boys and Girls Club or Big Brothers Big Sisters, that there is a community of people out there that needs to hear your message, that will, that will absolutely get value from what you're saying. And not just what you're saying, but how you're saying it, right? When we talk about the way that you deliver your message, everyone can say, oh, donate to my nonprofit. But can people really express it in a way that is meaningful, that is that is interesting, that grasps your attention, right? That's where live streaming comes into play, where you can press that button and you can demonstrate the emotion, you can demonstrate that that feeling and really the why behind, behind your job, behind your message, behind your purpose and your passion, right? So, so live streaming gives you such an infinitely better way to express what you're about, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're looking to do than just typing a status on Facebook or even posting a picture, right? A picture says a thousand words, but a video says a trillion <laughs> words, you know, that you can see exactly, you know, what Cheval is about, right? You can see he's wearing a blue collared shirt and he's got his glasses on, you know, and he's looking around now. He's like, is Chris done with his answer yet? Yes, no, I don't know. You know, like you can read everything about someone in the way that they approach a live video because it's the closest thing that we have today to mimicking a real life interaction. That's why I love live streaming. If I had so, oh, that is a big, living or dead? Do they have to be alive? Do they have to be alive? P past or present? So anyone in the history of the world, uh, if I could spend, spend time with, um, boy, I think especially here in the summer of 2017, it'd be fascinating to meet someone like, uh, Abraham Lincoln or, you know, George Washington, you know, one of our, our founding fathers, um, you know, yeah, there's so many different ways you can go with, with this sort of question. I mean, you could, uh, you know, say someone like Rob, like Robin Williams, you know, like you want to get in the mind of a brilliant legendary comedian like that, you know, who was taken too soon from us. Um, you know, someone like, like Babe Ruth, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Let, let's let's say Abraham Lincoln. Let's go with Abraham Lincoln. That would be a that would be a good one. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for asking. So uh, the book is, again, it's called 50 States, 100 Days, the book. Um, you can search for it on Amazon and get a copy uh, printed direct straight from there. Or you can message me on Twitter and uh, I can mail you a signed copy and that would be $25 USD. Um, you can learn more about me, the trip, the book at teamstrub.com and I'm all over social media at Chris Strub. Uh, and also, uh, I appreciate you giving me a second to mention the new course that I just launched a couple weeks ago. It's called Live Streaming for Nonprofits um, and it's, uh, it's about four and a half hours of video of me um, basically walking you through from beginning to end 
and there is no end, so I put end in air quotes, but beginning to the point where you can create some really, excuse me, some really wonderful content, you know, on Facebook Live, on Periscope, you know, and you can get the link to that at teamstrub.com or you go to academy.teamstrub.com and uh, check it out there. But um, if you're a nonprofit that's looking to learn more about uh, creating a successful series of content that's engaging, uh, that converts, to use Madeline's favorite word, um, you know, check out that that course, right? It's live streaming for nonprofits. Um, it's a bit of an investment, but again, to be able to um, communicate directly with your audience, with your supporters, with your volunteers, with the kids in your program, um, I think it's an important skill that every nonprofit in the country uh, should be picking up on in 2017 and into 2018. Um, huh. I should, shouldn't I? Um, look, I would say that done is better than perfect. Um, and I think that so many of us get wrapped up in perfection. I think so many of us worry about, uh, is the lighting right? Is the sound right? Is the video right? Is, uh, um, uh, is this the right time? Is this the right person? Is this the right? Do it. Act. Get started today, right? Like, take a look at what Cheval has done you know, to compile over 300 episodes of what's the word, right? Take a look at 50 States, 100 Days, right? And when you read this book, when you watch the videos, you're going to realize, wait, it's not perfect. You know, he could have done this, he could have done that, but you know what? I did it, right? Cheval has done it, right? Twitter smarter. Madeline, I'm sure, would go back in time and do things a little bit differently two years ago or even a year ago, right? But look, you only get one shot at life, man. You only get one chance. And as Cheval was saying before, you got to enjoy the journey as you go, right? That this is it. We don't get to do all this again. <laughs> I don't get to be 31 again. You know, I don't get to be 29 again. And so stop waiting, stop thinking, stop over planning and go out and execute and do it and learn from your experiences, learn from your mistakes, and then go on and do something better. That waiting is not going to get you anywhere. And uh, Cheval, I really appreciate your time. This has been awesome. I'm so grateful for you for taking the time this afternoon for inviting me. And uh, I'm, I'm really grateful to have met you in Houston. You're the man. I'm proud of you. I'm excited to see where you'll be presenting next and uh, proud of all that you've done as a pioneer for the Blue Jeans Network also. Uh, they should be really happy and fortunate to have you if they're watching or listening. Um, you are awesome. Keep up the great work, and I'm excited to see you in Houston again sometime, maybe when the, the Cowboys come in and beat up on the Texans. We'll, we'll see. Thanks, buddy. All right, that's it. We'll stop the recording. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. You know, they, you know, whoever, you know, they can listen to the show and they'll, they'll more than likely enjoy, you know, enjoy the show more because it's, they were a part of the recording process too. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. And I think more podcasters should be doing stuff like this. I did a podcast the other day on Skype uh, on Monday morning. And, um, you know, it's always good to be able to, to see each other and, and also be able to share even more of the experience, you know, with your audience. So, um, I don't know. I'm sure you'll be able to download this and you, you could probably just put it up on Facebook along next to all the other Facebook lives. Like 
no one's going to know the difference when they're watching on replay that it was live or not. You know what I mean? So I, I appreciate your time, man. No problem. Thank you again. Thank you for being on the show. And, and I, of course, it's gonna. this is going to air later on. Like, probably, it's going to like, podcasts of this is going to air, like, probably, I don't, I don't, like, a couple of months, I know for sure. I just don't know exactly when. Okay. Because, uh, you know, I have, all, I have a whole lot of recordings in front yeah. of yours. But, but the thing but the thing is, though, at least the people seen, at least hear the story and saw the recording, saw the actual, quote, unquote, live television show. So perfect. It's, so it's a good thing, and and of course you know, once it comes out, I'll let you know. And what I'm and what I'm doing now too is like I'm 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 taking snippets of all the recordings that I do on Blue Teams Network, and I post them on my YouTube channel first before I hear the show, the actual podcast recording. You know, to get them a little, you know, get them. Like a uh, preview of what they're going to hear on the show, so okay, that's that's um that's the reason that. Awesome. Yeah, keep me posted. Let me know when the actual podcast. And uh, let me know when you post this on your Facebook page, and I'll link to that on my website, so people people can go there from there yeah, also. Definitely. And uh, when you at when you have the podcast link, I'll add that link onto my website too. All right. All right. Definitely. All right, man. Be, again. be good. Talk soon. Right. See you, uh, bud. Thank you again. See ya. Well, there you go, guys. There's, uh, what's the word with Cheval John? It's August 17th, 2017. Uh, this is uh, almost two years since the end of the book. Again, you see here, four days until August 21st. There is the grand finale in Asheville. Again, 50 states, 100 days. The book, as I hinted at, and I've hinted a few times before, um, it's actually 99 days, but don't tell anyone. I, I, can, I was not moving much that, that 100th day anyway. Um, so I still count uh, August 22nd as a day of uh, the journey. But thanks for tuning in. If you watch this on YouTube Live, um, appreciate you. I probably could have thought it through a little bit better and had Cheval's audio in there, but um, I talk a lot anyway. So uh, peace out, guys, and um, thanks for tuning in on YouTube. Adios. Yes, I am sure I want to stop streaming. Okay, bye.